Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Did you know, according to the Bible, there are books in heaven that have your entire life? I mean, everything you're going to do your whole life. It's your destiny. Amen. And it's already recorded. And God's greatest passion is for you to fulfill the destiny God has for you. And everyone has a destiny. And it's a good destiny. I don't care what your age is, my guest has information, revelation, if you will, that will allow you to stop the devil in his tracks of interfering with you fulfilling your destiny. Would you like to find this out? Yeah. Me too. Now, my guest is Robert Henderson, and he's been a guest before, and he talks about going to the courts of heaven. Would you briefly describe that? Yeah, I believe that there's a spiritual dimension uh, called the courts of heaven out of Daniel 17, where it says the court was seated and the books were open. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's what I call the third realm of prayer, uh, because when Jesus taught us on prayer in Luke 11, he said we should approach God as father and friend. But then in Luke 18, he added, approach him also as judge. When we approach God as father or friend, that's a very deep, intimate relationship. But when we come before him as judge, that's a very reverential place. People are getting healed that never got healed before. This revelation is amazing. How did God show it to you? Well, it came out of my own desperation and necessity. Initially, I had a son that was set in depression that was not given to depression. He was there for two years. And I had actually battled and warred on the battlefield uh, in prayer, so to speak. But all of a sudden, the Lord whispered to me and said, bring him to my courts. And when I did that out of the limited understanding I had at that time, uh, according to Romans 8, 26, the Bible says when we don't know how to pray, he helps us. And so he began to help me and he led me through the process in the courts of heaven. And a week and a half later, my son calls and says, Dad, can I talk to you? And I said, absolutely. And he says, I don't know what happened, but a week and a half ago, all the depression left. And he was completely free, completely free. Well, you're, you're hearing this all over the world, really, from, from that revelation. But this latest one is the one that really gets me. Um, uh, but to understand it, tell me about the books in heaven. Yeah, according to Daniel 7, verse 10, the Bible says that the court is seated or comes to order. It's ready to proceed in, 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 in session, and the books are open. And there's a lot of books in heaven. There's all sorts of books, but one of the main books in heaven is books of destiny. We find that in, in Psalms 139, 16, where David said, all my substance, which I believe is the DNA of who we are, was written in a book, and all my days yet unfashioned, they were all written down in a book before time began. And what people don't understand is we have to reach our divine destiny for God's ultimate purpose to be done in the earth. When all of us as the body of Christ... It's a symphony. Yes. Yes. We, when we get our destiny, He gets His purpose. Okay. What's the problem? The problem is, is that the enemy uses legal things in the spirit realm to stop us from getting our destiny. That's why Daniel 7.10 says the court was seated and the books are open. It's going to take courtroom activity to get what's in the books fleshed out in real practical life. What is the major strategy of the devil? What does he use the most? He, he, uses, he uses three basic areas to, to, to work against us. First of all, in Luke 22, 31, uh, it says that Jesus said to Peter, Satan has desired to have you. Okay, that word desired, it literally means he demanded you be put on trial. 
Hmm. So Satan had an awareness that of, of what Peter's destiny was, what was in his book. And he was going to use a trial or a legal issue in the courts to deny him his right of having that. In other words, he would say before God, I have evidence that would disqualify Peter from his destiny. And Jesus had to know how to go into the courts, answer those accusations so Peter could have what God had, had ordained for him to have and he could walk out the destiny God had for him. And but he you, does you, the same thing for all of us. You explain, but there are curses uh, through bloodline. Uh, if someone has a curse, give me uh, some examples of what might be a tip-off. There's a curse operating well, in their life. Well, the, the first thing that I think a curse does is it creates wrong mindsets. In other words, we, we think incorrectly about ourselves. Maybe, maybe because there's a curse of poverty in a family line, they think with a poverty mentality. They don't believe God wants them to prosper. And or, or there's sickness in that bloodline, or there's depression in that bloodline, um, or there's anger issues in that bloodline. It, it fashions and forms the way we see ourselves. And so one of the first things that a curse does is it creates a mindset. And when that curse is broken or is removed, then we're able to come free of that, that wrong thinking. Give me your definition of a curse. Well, I, I call a curse uh, a, any, a, a spiritual force that will sabotage our future and our success. I mean, I don't know how many times I lived my life before I discovered this, that it would seem like I would be on the brink of a breakthrough only for it not to happen. And I would see this pattern repeat itself over and over. And that's always a sign of a curse, a repetition of a pattern over and over and over. Whatever it may be, there is a curse that's operating in that situation. The Bible says in Proverbs 26 2, a curse without a cause cannot land. It says it's like birds flying around looking for a place to land. So, so it says a curse has to have a cause. That word cause the, uh, it would imply that the, it has found a legal right to operate against this bloodline. And that's why you see certain types of attitudes, behaviors, sicknesses, and depressions, or whatever, being passed from generation to generation, never able to come into the destiny ordained by God. Briefly, you had a curse in your bloodline that if it hadn't been dealt with, the devil would have stopped you from sitting right in that chair today. Absolutely. I mean, I, I realized that timidity was a curse. It was in my family line. My dad was very timid. My oldest sister was very timid and, and, and on back. I was so timid that when my wife and I were dating, she would have to order for me. She would have to talk to That's the waiter so or waitress. I know. <laughs> she would have to talk to the waiter or waitress for me because I was so bashful and timid and, and not wanting to do that. And so I realized that, that I, I used to think, well, that's just a personality trait. No, that's a curse. If, I had, if that hadn't have broken, I would not be able to be a minister, a spokesman. You would not have achieved your destiny. That's right. When we come back, I want to see that these curses, these sins of the bloodline of iniquity will be broken in your life. Be right back. The supernatural knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network, offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. I love that I can watch my favorite shows anytime I want. My workouts are out of the box, and so are my ISN podcasts. Download the free ISN app today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, you teach there are four major effects of iniquities, these bloodline curses that pass down. Yes. Um, I, when, when I say that, when I start dealing with iniquity, I say iniquity will do four things. Number one, it will give the enemy a legal right to tempt us in a given area. In other words, if there's iniquity in the bloodline that, that someone gave themselves over to, you will see that temptation come and began to work in a family line. Anger, like lust. an addiction? Yes. In fact, all strongholds, I believe, are connected to iniquitous <laughs> issues in the bloodline. That's what makes them so strong. And then the, the second thing is, is that um, iniquity will fashion our identity. And just real quickly, see, Isaiah, when he, in Isaiah 6, is in the glory of God, he says, 
I'm undone. Woe is me. I ought to be destroyed. That's literally what he says. But then once his iniquity is cleansed, he says, here am I, send me, I'm a prophet. His complete identity changed once the iniquity issue was dealt with in his life. And then the third thing it does is it detours us from our destiny. The enemy uses the iniquity to take us off course from what God actually has written in our book. And then the fourth thing is he uses iniquity to build legal cases against us. Okay. You say there is a major key to undo these iniquities. Yeah, I believe that, that, that rec recognition or revelation. Um, I actually tell people, when you're looking at your family line, I say, you know, you should look at um, your, uh, your parents, you and your siblings, and your children. You will see iniquity, iniquitous patterns in those three generations. So you don't need a great revelation. No, you just have to observe what's going on in your life. That's right. And in say, your family. That's right. And say, Lord, we're repenting so, so of you've this. you've been upset about your family. Instead, there are clues for you to, and the whole family to be free. That's right. And, but then after I have done everything I know to do, then I say, Lord, if there's anything else that I need to know, would you just reveal it to me? Which is what he, what he did for me. He actually has brought revelation to me of issues the enemy was legally using that was stopping me from coming into my destiny. Well, how about someone that says, once I was born again, all those iniquities, gone, yeah. finished. You have no faith, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I, I hear that quite often. But what I tell them is this. When Jesus died on the cross, it was the greatest legal transaction of history. That's what the cross was. It was a verdict rendered. So, but here's what I tell them. A verdict that is not executed into place has no power. And in John chapter 16, the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, He's going to convince the world of judgment because the ruler of this world is judge. In other words, He is going to make us to realize that when Jesus died on the cross, there was a verdict against the devil. But it is the power of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to execute that verdict into place so that we get the benefit of everything Jesus died for. That's what we do in the courts of heaven. There's an interesting story you share about your great grandfather. You had a dream about him. You know, you didn't know him or know anything about him. Nothing. And and see, I was in a real period of frustration because for decades I had seen broken promises in my life. People would promise me things and then not fulfill them. And over and over and over this happened. And I was so frustrated. Well, in the middle of that, the, I had a dream. And the Lord, in the, or in the dream, I was told that my great-grandfather, through negligence, had injured somebody. And that there was now, as a result of that, a judgment against me. So when I woke up, I realized immediately what the Lord was saying. He was saying, there's a verdict against you in the court of heaven. The enemy has a case against you because of the negligence of your great-grandfather. So I had to go and begin to repent for my negligence, the negligence of my family, but especially the negligence of my great-grandfather. And, and when I did that, all of a sudden, a new release came and new destiny started coming to me. In fact, the Lord said to me, He said, the negligence of your great-grandfather stole someone else's dreams away. The enemy has used that as a legal right to steal your dreams away. All right, if, if you hadn't had that dream, could you have gotten rid of that uh, iniquity? I don't think so. I think that in that case, I needed divine revelation. And you were from the praying Lord. for that. I was praying for that. I was saying, Lord, why is this, why is this pattern repeating mm -hmm. itself in my life? And, uh, and the Lord gave me that dream to, to help me know why. I, I can tell you there's a freedom coming to you. There's an answer coming to you. And you're about ready to fulfill your destiny. I want Robert to briefly explain how to go to the court of heaven and legally get rid of the charges against you and those iniquities. Be right back. Call now and get Robert Henderson's brand new book and exclusive four-part audio CD curriculum, which includes eight messages, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven, plus his bonus booklet, Accessing the Courts of Heaven, How to Position Yourself for Breakthrough Prayer. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9469. Through Robert Henderson's brand new book, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven, you will understand how to direct your prayers towards the courtrooms of heaven. 
instead of the battlefield where the enemy is engaging you in warfare. Find out how to access God's heavenly books and watch your destiny begin to be fulfilled. Find out how to deal with the enemy of your soul, the accuser of the brethren, every time you experience his attacks. Begin to receive and act upon the power and authority granted to you by God in the courts of heaven. Learn the secrets to cleanse your bloodline from generational curses through his exclusive four-part audio CD curriculum, which includes eight powerful messages. You will discover what's written in your book of destiny. Begin to retrieve and unlock your heavenly book. Understand the keys to identify curses that block your healing, your breakthrough, and your miracle. Plus, receive his bonus booklet, Accessing the Courts of Heaven, How to Position Yourself for Breakthrough Prayer. You will understand the three dimensions of prayer. Discover the three keys to unlocking your breakthrough in the courts of heaven. Learn the six prophetic declarations that Jesus' blood makes on your behalf. Understand how to cancel the devil's accusations by releasing the supernatural power of your testimony. You can take this powerful booklet with you wherever you go. Women can put it in their pocketbooks. Men can put it in their pocket. This tool will change the whole course of your life. This tool will remove the blockages in your hearing God. Don't miss out on getting Robert Henderson's brand new book and exclusive four-part audio CD curriculum, which includes eight messages, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven, plus his bonus booklet, Accessing the Courts of Heaven, How to Position Yourself for Breakthrough Prayer. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9469. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box. 39222 Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9469 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, your wife, it, it, she didn't need a dream or revelation. It, it, it was obvious uh, there had been attacks in her generations on lives. Explain. Well, I was, I was traveling as I always do, and I had a very vivid dream where that my wife was standing before me, but standing behind her was her aunt who has been dead, gone for about 20 years. And I knew in the dream that her aunt was a part of the cloud of witnesses that the Bible speaks of. And so no one's seeing her but me. So my wife is saying to me, I'm getting stronger and stronger. But her aunt standing behind her had her arms folded, shaking her head, communicating to me, no, she's getting weaker and weaker and is going to die prematurely. And I knew that there was a scheme of the devil, that the devil was saying, I found a legal right to take your wife out prematurely. And so I knew I had to go into the courts of heaven and undo that right that he was saying before the courts, I have. Uh, and so we, we did that and we broke that power of premature death. See, her mother died at 58 and her grandmother died at 40. So these curses give a legal right until you legally Break them. Is this some mystical thing? I mean, where uh, when you go to the court of heaven, or is this just a, an act of your will? It's really an act of my faith. I say, Lord, I know you're judge, and so I'm coming before your courts. And so I, I, what I do is I say this, Lord, I'm approaching you as judge, and I'm asking for the courts to open. So I'm saying, Lord, would you just open the courts? And all of a sudden, the atmosphere begins to change. And then when I go in... I, I heard you teaching on this, and I felt the atmosphere <laughs> change when you did this. Yes, it does. It's and, amazing. And I me. did it, and the atmosphere changed. Yes, anybody can do it, because God, God gives us access by the blood of Jesus into this place. And so I say, okay, Lord, let the courts open, and I come, and are, I... Are, are you fearful of this, Judge? No, not, not, in a, not in a terrifying sense or a tormenting well, sense. Well, you know, although you have reverence, I think the fix is on with the judge. That's I <laughs> think the judge is his father. What do you think? <laughs> That's right. That's right. He's looking for us to get, he's looking for us to put faith in what Jesus did. Right. And bring our case on the basis of that. And, and that gives him the right he needs to release verdicts in our behalf. And so I say, Lord, I'm just presenting my case. And one of the things I do when I go, I say, Lord, I'm just, I come before you according to Romans chapter 12, and I present myself as a living sacrifice. If there's anything in me, 
that needs to be dealt with. Lord, I, I humbly submit myself to you. And, and I may need to repent before him for just a few moments if I've allowed things in my life. But ultimately, I am allowed to stand there because the, of the righteousness of who he is. Because it, it's his righteousness that grants me access into that court. Can you win every time? I can win every time. I, like I can win size. every time. Um, would you take the whole television audience, internet audience, and studio audience to heaven and Absolutely. lead us in a prayer? Okay, let's do that. Uh, do, would you like that audience? Yeah. Okay. Amen. So, okay, so Father, I just, as we're just um, here before you, I just want to ask for your courts to open, Lord, right now. We come humbly before you and we acknowledge you as God, the judge of all the earth. But we say, let the courts open. And Lord, by faith now, even as I see the doors opening, Lord, we step into the courts and we come. Many times I'll see like a table that's before the, the throne. And the throne usually, for me, it usually reaches very high. I, I see us before the throne at this table. And Lord, even as we're here, we just say, that if there's anything in us that's displeasing to you, would you just let your blood cleanse that right now? right now. And Lord, even as we're here, I want to ask that any sin, transgression, or iniquitous thing in our past that the enemy is using to build a case against us, would you, according to Colossians 2.14, would you cause every accusation against us that's contrary to us be taken out of the way because of who you are and what you have done on the cross? Lord, I'm just thanking you for doing that. And let, let all that are watching right now, let every case against them, I ask by the blood of Jesus, be dismissed and be removed. And Lord, now let their request and their destiny be settled and secured and become reality for them in Jesus' name. I thank you for doing that. Amen. You know, it's Robert. It seems too simple. <laughs> it really does. Is it? That yeah, it simple? does. It, yes, it really is. I mean, when you're before the Lord and you have more time, you can say, Lord, it, it, it's like you're in a fellowship with him. But what if I don't see heaven? I don't see a desk. I don't see a courtroom. Will it work just as well? Yeah, because for a long time I didn't see anything and I was getting major results. It's just that as I said, Lord, I want to see. I, I, I've, I've heard and I felt my entire spirit life. But Lord, I want to see, would you just open that realm to me and would you let me see? And as I postured myself in faith, I become aware of it. So, but I didn't have to have that. I could just move there by faith based on what I see in the Word of God. You said Moses is a great example of this. Explain briefly. Well, Mo, God said to Moses, get out of the way. I've had it with Israel. I'm going to wipe them out. I remember I wouldn't be here today <laughs> if it wasn't for Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moses said to the Lord, Lord, you can't do that. He said, your purpose is in them. Your reputation is in them. They'll say if you destroy them, you could bring them out, but you couldn't bring them in. And then he said, uh, you're a covenant keeping God and you'll be accused of not keeping your covenant and breaking your word. And so on three, on basis of three things, Moses presented a case before the court. He never. So, so, so just as Moses did this, we present a case before That's right. The court. Okay, go and, ahead. And so, so Mo, but Moses' case in the court was based on the purpose of God, not someone's need. And I tell people, when you go into the courts, we need to present cases as much as we can based on God's purpose in the matter, not necessarily our need. We may come before the Father and the friend with our need, but when we're in the court, if we will present a case based on God's purposes, Lord, that your purpose is locked up in this person, in this child, in this situation. Give me, give me an example. Someone is a child that's dying. What would you say? I would say, Lord, this child has a destiny written in the books of heaven. If this right. child dies, then your purpose in that child is going to be lost. So I'm asking you, Lord, please rise and render a verdict of this person's healing, this person's release from drug addiction, this person's release from rebellion. Lord, let these powers be broken or else you're going to lose your purpose in this child. That's the way Moses approached God. I pray in the name that is above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach Sikinu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness, that you will fulfill yes. your full destiny and that no curse will prosper in your life. Amen. 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 
Have you ever prayed for a miracle, a healing, or a breakthrough for a long time? Binding and loosing, shouting out scriptures, yelling at the devil with no results. There is an answer. Robert Henderson received a revelation from the Lord concerning the courts of heaven that uncovers the way to have your prayers answered every time and quickly. The enemy, Satan, cannot stop you any longer from fulfilling your God-given destiny and purpose. Now Robert wants to share these supernatural keys with you. Call now and get Robert Henderson's brand new book and exclusive four-part audio CD curriculum, which includes eight messages, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven, plus his bonus booklet, Accessing the Courts of Heaven, How to Position Yourself for Breakthrough Prayer. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9469. Each one of us has a destiny that's written down in heaven. The problem is, is that the devil has a legal case against us that wants to deny us that destiny. So we have to know how to go into the courts, deal with the legal issues, remove the curses so that we can have the fullness of destiny that God intends for us to have. Through Robert Henderson's brand new book, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven, you will understand how to direct your prayers towards the courtrooms of heaven instead of the battlefield where the enemy is engaging you in warfare. Find out how to access God's heavenly books and watch your destiny begin to be fulfilled. Find out how to deal with the enemy of your soul, the accuser of the brethren. Every time you experience his attacks, begin to receive and act upon the power and authority granted to you by God in the courts of heaven. Learn the secrets to cleanse your bloodline from generational curses through his exclusive four-part audio CD curriculum, which includes eight powerful messages. You will discover what's written in your book of destiny. Begin to retrieve and unlock your heavenly book. Understand the keys to identify curses that block your healing, your breakthrough through and your miracle. Plus, receive his bonus booklet, Accessing the Courts of Heaven, How to Position Yourself for Breakthrough Prayer. You will understand the three dimensions of prayer. Discover the three keys to unlocking your breakthrough in the courts of heaven. Learn the six prophetic declarations that Jesus' blood makes on your behalf. Understand how to cancel the devil's accusations by releasing the supernatural power of your testimony. You can take this powerful booklet with you wherever you go. Women can put it in their pocketbooks men can put it in their pocket. This tool will change the whole course of your life. This tool will cause all heaven to rejoice. This tool will remove the blockages in your family, in your finances, in your job, in your hearing God. Don't miss out on getting Robert Henderson's brand new book and exclusive four-part audio CD curriculum, which includes eight messages, Unlocking Destinies from the Courts of Heaven, plus his bonus booklet, Accessing the Courts of Heaven, How to Position Yourself for Breakthrough Prayer. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9469. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9469 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Hammond. Please join me on It's Supernatural with Sid Roth and discover the key that unlocks the door to our spirit life and all the attributes and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Don't miss it.